Hi, it's Shelly Mosley. Today is March the 8th of 2023. And I have a word to share that I heard um, from April the 17th of 2022, which was Easter Sunday um, last year. And so the Lord has, this is actually the second time that he sent me to this, to release this. And now I know why. So um, I'm going to pray and then I will release that and then I will do what he's instructed me to do. So Father, I thank you in Jesus name. We praise you. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you have your way during this time. I thank you, Lord, that as these words go out, that whoever hears them, Lord, that they will be encouragement, that they will be, they will call to repentance. They will uh, teach, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you are above everything that we could ever ask hope or think lord you do you go beyond and above whatever we could ever ask hope or think and so we praise you lord that as these words go out lord that not one word will fall to the ground i thank you that they will return to you fulfilled um, and that they will accomplish what you sent them out to do lord the words that return to you are not void and so we praise you for that and we thank you lord thank you that that you've given us the opportunity to hear what you're saying, Lord, in this hour, and ask you, Lord, just to whoever is supposed to hear these, that they would be sent to them and that they would hear them in Jesus mighty name. We praise you. We give you all the praise and glory and honor for it, Lord. It all belongs to you in Jesus name. Amen. So April the 17th of 2022, and this is what he said. Again, it was uh, Easter Sunday. He said, my children, this is a day of great celebration. This is a day that the devil did not count on. This day is the day your kinsman redeemer rose from the dark, cold tomb where his broken body was placed. This is a day of great triumph and victory over death, hell, and the grave. You are redeemed from the curse of death. Praise me this day. Praise my most precious name. You are no longer slaves to this enemy. You are victorious through Jesus Christ, who gave it all for you, my children. He bore the pain and suffering for you. He carried your guilt and shame and sin upon his back. The very deep stripes bear your healing. He was bruised and battered for you. He was broken and shamed. He was cursed and accused. He did it all for you so that you, my precious ones, could be free. In him is great joy and great peace. In him is fullness and strength. In him I am well pleased. You have this same spirit living on the inside of you that guides you into all righteousness you bear his name in your forehead and you have been sealed with it until the day of redemption. Fear not, children of Almighty God, for he has overcome the grave. He has overcome his earthly pain and suffering. He is risen. He, he lives so that you may live. For I am the God of hope. I am the God of long suffering. I am the God of peace and joy. There is none like me who could ever compare to me. There is no one beside me who could do what I have done. I am the great I am. I am your treasure that you've been searching for. I am the rivers of living water. I am the first and the last. I am everything in between. Rejoice, your Savior has come and defeated your adversary, the devil. He no longer holds the deed to you, my children. He lost, and Jesus has won everything for you. Because of his obedience to me, you live. Because he has done what I willed, you are blessed and healed. You have the very spirit of me living in the depths of your heart and you are no longer a slave to someone of whom you don't belong. You are mine, children, and you were bought with a precious price. Your life is now my life, and mine yours. You couldn't pay the ransom price for your freedom, but I did it for you. 
You couldn't do anything to save yourself, so I did it for you. Every drop of precious blood that my son shed was for you. It was all for you, my children. You are now co-heirs with Christ. You are my children of whom I love greatly. You were redeemed from the pits of hell. You are free. So rejoice this day. Rejoice that your life has been bought and paid for. You stand righteous before me because of my son's blood that covers you. When I see the blood, I see that you are mine. There is no great power in, sorry, there is great power in even one drop of that most precious blood. It covers every sin, every scar, every bad decision, every illness, every doubt, everything you need to survive as my child. It covers it all. You are now mine, says the Lord. There is no fear of death now, no fear in going to the grave. No, you are saved from those fears. You will be with me when the time comes. For all eternity will you be with me, my beautiful bride. No one could ever steal you away from me, not one. You are mine and I am yours, says the Lord, your Redeemer. You are my precious. Do not think it strange when you hear of great rattlings. Know that I am shaking and rattling the hidden things loose. They will be hidden no more. You will hear of death camps in other countries. Do not fear, my children. I am wiping these things out. What the evil ones have against you and had planned for you will boomerang on them. You will hear this word boomerang a lot. I am reversing many things that were intended for you, and I am turning them to the right and proper side. The March of Dimes will be in your news. Watch what is being said. Baton Rouge will be in your news soon. I am moving to restore. Listen for the name Carmichael to be in your news. This is a sign of my plans coming to the forefront. Klaus Schwab will be in your news. I am removing him and his evil agenda. He will answer for his part in the evil that has gone on against my children. Death is at his doorstep. My children, many of these deep state players have already been taken out. They are hidden from your sight. It will all be revealed to you soon, and what is shown will shock many. Brace for a hard impact. It will jar many who have been asleep to be wide awake. Great anger is in people, sorry, great anger in the people is coming and what they will soon see. Your enemies are defeated, my children. All that has been taken from you will be replaced. All that, all the lies you've been told will be exposed. All the evil and corrupt deals made against you will be shown to all. Like an open book, it will read, Your slave masters are finished. Great amounts of death are will come for these. Many, many deaths will be reported, and the truth will no longer be hidden. Brace yourself. Keep a right heart before me. Give it all to me, as I have said before. It is not your battle, but mine, says the Lord. Let me work for you. You are in my great hands of protection. Nothing, no nothing can harm you during these days ahead. You will soon hear of snow in the desert and people will say it is very strange and untimely. I am moving in the deserts. I am covering the darkness with my great light. Hold on, my precious ones, your Redeemer lives. And that was the end of that word. Um, there was a couple of things that were fulfilled already because, again, this was last um, April. One of them was, it was interesting, um, Baton Rouge will soon be in your news. And that was actually fulfilled on May the 3rd of 2022. And there was a Garth Brooks concert in uh, Baton Rouge that registered as an earthquake on the Richter scale. And so um, I thought that was very interesting because it reminded me of when the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho. And on that last day 
on the seventh time around when they shouted and I'm sure that an earthquake came, you know, it registered as an earthquake um, because the walls fell. And so I just, I thought that was um, interesting that that's already been fulfilled. And then the other one actually was just fil fulfilled a couple of days ago, two days ago, I think. Um, you will hear of snow in the desert and my people will, uh, and people will say it is very strange and untimely. And this actually just happened um, in Arizona. The Arizona desert was covered with snow. And in the news article, I love it. It said it was very strange um, thing, thing to happen in that part of, of Arizona. So that was fulfilled. But the thing that the Lord wanted me to go over was um, because, like I said, this is the second time he's drawn me to this word. And so I was like, okay, Lord, there's something in here that you're wanting me to, you know, to, to talk about. And it's the fact that we have the spirit of God living on the inside of us. And so, and he talked about that several different ways. He talked about all the things that Jesus did, you know, upon his death and resurrection for us. Um, but he said that, you know, that his, the very same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives on the inside of us. And so um, he said that a couple of times in this word, but he also talked about how that we are his. And he said, there is no fear of death now. No fear is going, no fear in going to the grave. No, you are saved from those fears. And so um, it was very interesting the way that he highlighted those two things because they kind of work hand in hand. And um, this, this is not, many of you probably already understand this, but I'm sure there may be some that don't understand this. So I'm just going to uh, pull the teacher hat out and, um, and go over with what the Lord had wanted me to go over about the, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is referred to as um, the spirit of the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Um, there are many, many different things that it, sorry, I had them written down. Let me see. Um, there's many different things that he, that, that it's, that he's referred to. And yes, he, he is a person, the spirit of promise, the spirit of grace, the spirit of, of life, the spirit of adoption and the spirit of holiness. So all of those things that the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is um, there, there. He's also called by these names. Now in John 14 and 25 through 27, Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you, but the comforter who is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whosoever I have said unto you, whatsoever I have said unto you, sorry, peace I live with you, leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, um, but I give the way that I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then another, um, another scripture in John 14 and 15 says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the father and he will give you another helper and he, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. And so he's talking about the, the Holy Spirit, how when Jesus was, when Jesus ascended back to heaven, he said that, um, that the Lord would send a helper or a comforter, and that is the Spirit of God, the, the Holy Spirit. And so I, I like that um, I, I read, and actually in my Bible, I have, you know, referenced things, and, and it was interesting the way that they put it. Um, he, they said that, you know, the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it, you can look at it like the father is like an executive. The son, which is Jesus, is like um, the con uh, the uh, the builder, and then the Holy Spirit is the contractor. And so they all work together, um, but they have different you know things that they do. And so when when he talked about 
the the seal being um, in our forehead. And I, I had to, I'll be honest, when he said that, I was like, okay, Lord, you know, and I knew that I had, I knew that that was in Revelation um, about the 144,000. Um, and I'll go over that in a second. But he talked about it be the Holy Spirit sealing us. And so the Holy Spirit is re referred to as the deposit or the seal or um, an earnest in the hearts of, of Christians. And Ephesians 1 and 13 says, when you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, you were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. A seal, as we know, is, um, is like an identifying mark that's you know placed on a letter or a contract or you know another document i know like in the old days when kings you know would would put their seal they would you know write out a thing and fold it up and they would take the wax and, and put their seal on it and it was so that it, it showed that that's who the per the letter actually who sealed it you know where it came from and so and it's similar to like branding cattle or horses or or you know that's it's a mark that would keep, you know, thieves from stealing whatever it was to, as, as a property, you know, proven. And so, and unfortunately, you know, in the old days too, they would, um, they would brand their slaves to show their ownership. Um, but the Holy Spirit is God's seal on his people. It's his claim. It's as we are his very own, it's, it's his claim on us. And so, the, the seal, the word seal, for the Greek word, because it's in the New Testament, um, the Greek word is translated into earnest, and so which also means a pledge. If you've ever bought a house or, or land or anything and you have to put earnest money down, it's like a down payment, really not a down payment. It's like money showing that, um, that what that your, your intention is to go forward with you know the property that you're trying trying to buy or whatever but the gift of the of the spirit to uh, christians or to you know to believers is like a down payment on our uh, heavenly inheritance and so god gave that and christ is the one who he, he promised us and he secured us when he died on the cross for us um but it's because the spirit has sealed us that we're assured in our salvation and no one can break that seal of, of God. So the Holy Spirit is kind of uh, given to believers as the first installment um, to assure that our full inheritance as children of the most high God um, will be delivered. And the Holy Spirit is given to us to confirm to us that we belong to God who who grants, um, you know, who grants his spirit as, as a gift, just like he gave us grace and faith as a gift. Um, Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. We don't have grace by our own doing. We don't have faith by our own doing. We aren't sealed by the Holy Spirit with our own doing. Um, it's the, These are gifts that God that God gave us. Um, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And so it's not something that you can do to, you know, works that you can do to gain these things. They're gifts from God, that, and they, they can only be given by Him. And so that gift of, of the Spirit is what renews us and sanctifies us. And when you are saved... Um, it produces in your heart the feelings that um, the desires and the things that change, the hopes that you have, the things that change that are evidence that we are accepted by God because it, it shows that repentance comes when when these things happen. And so it, it's it's a seal or a promise that our hope is genuine. We have redemption and salvation. Um, as his promise and it's it's that seal is what guarantees um, what guarantees us and God grants us his Holy Spirit 
in, in pledges that we are forever his. We are, you know, on, on the last day when he when he comes to take us home and we go get to live in eternity with him, it is that that promise that will be um, completed, you know. Um, but it's proof that when you get saved and you you change, and you know, and I just actually heard a girl say this the other day. She said, I'm different. I feel different. I think different. I I, you know, and so and that that those things are proof that when you truly give your heart to Jesus, you change, you know, you you may not you may have some issues that you um, that you still have to work on. But for the most part, you know, it, it's it is an ever moving um, going forward thing with God. You know, you're not just saved and then everything's magically you know better. It's you have to strive for those things. But because you didn't get like that overnight, you know, you have to. But the 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 fruit of the spirit which is in um galatians chapter five you know there's you know and you know the bible says you will know them by their fruits and so the fruit just like a tree bears fruit that you will know people that that, that are christians or that um that have the holy spirit by the fruit of the spirit what's the fruit of the spirit for and again this is galatians 5 uh, 22 through 23 but the the fruit of the spirit the result of his presence within us this is the amplified version is love unselfish concern for others joy inner peace patience not the ability to wait but how we act while we're waiting kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is no law and so these are the fruits of the spirit Sometimes we have, sometimes we lack here and there, and it's something we have to strive to work toward to let God, you know, in all the parts of our of our heart and our soul to change us and help us to grow in these things. Um, but I always thought that patience in this in this scripture, I always thought that patience was, you know, the ability to wait, and it's not. It's it's how you act while you're waiting, and so. Um, when we have to work to produce these these good fruits that confirm the spirit of God, um, when we conform to God's commands, um, when we conform to His will, when we have a passion for for prayer and praising Him and and loving His people, um, or loving all people really, you know, we we have that we show love because we've been shown love by our Father. But these things are evidences that the Holy Spirit is renewed um, in our heart, and it and it's sign it's sealed for the day of redemption on on Christian hearts. And so, when a person receives Jesus, like I said, as as their Savior, um, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit seals or guarantees that that individual is a child of God. And all who believe in Jesus are sealed with this Holy Spirit of God, the same Spirit. And the sealing is what confirms the fact that the Holy Ghost is is in us. But we may never um, we may never feel the 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 sealing. In other words, you know, I'm sure that cattle that get branded, I'm sure they feel that, but we don't actually, it's not something that we feel. It just, it, it automatically happens. But second Corinthians one and 21 says, now it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ and who has anointed us, empowering us with the gifts of the spirit. It is he who has also put his seal on us that is, he has appropriated us and certified us as his own and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge, like a security deposit to guarantee the fulfillment of his promise of eternal life. And sealing is for everyone who believes. Um, the New Testament makes it clear that the Holy Spirit himself is that seal. We don't seal ourselves. It's the Holy Spirit that that um, that does it. And so uh, in Ephesians 4 and 30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him, by whom you were sealed and marked, branded 
as God's own for the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. So we we can't ever, you know, strive, like I said, there's, it can't be done by works. We can never strive to reach the goal to be sealed. It The sealing happens the moment that we believe, the moment that we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And it's something that God can only do, you know, nobody else can do it. The sealing of the Spirit happens to all Christians who who believe. And so, um, again, we don't directly experience it. We don't feel it. There's no like outward brand on us. Um, but it is, it is a, uh, sorry, I got a kid coming through here. It is a, um, it's seen in the spirit. It's what God sees when he, when he looks at us, he sees that seal on our hearts. And so a seal, again, we, we went over the, the things that a seal does, you know, with letters and things, but it is a sign of, of authority. And when Christ was buried, his tomb was sealed with the Roman seal. And in uh, Matthew 27 and 66, it says, And they went and made the grave secure, and along with the guard, they set a seal on the stone. And so the seal in this case was the authority of Rome. It was a, a Roman seal. But so, so we know that a seal is a, a mark of, of identification or ownership. And so in the Old Testament, there are places that we, that we would see, um, where people did the same thing. In Isaiah 44 and 5, it says, One will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Still another will write on his hand, the Lord's, and will take the name Israel. And so in this instance, some people wrote on their hand, this was again in Isaiah, um, to indicate that they belong to the Lord. In other words, he owned them. He, he had ownership of them. And when you read in, in Ezekiel um, chapter nine, there was an angel that, you know, the Lord was cleaning house. And so, and this is when he, he said that uh, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And so when this angel came, he was clothed in linen and, and he told that angel, you know, go and put this mark upon their foreheads of all who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are being done. Um, and so the Lord, so that they would be protected when, when the judgment came for everyone else. And so when they had that, they were seen with that mark on their forehead, they were protected. They belong to the Lord. And so the mark on the forehead is a mark of ownership. And again, when I brought up the, uh, in the book of Revelation uh, chapter seven, when, um, in the future, the Lord will seal 12,000 from each of the tribes of, of Israel to keep them from harm. And we read that in uh, Revelation chapter seven that says, wait, do not uh, hurt the land or the sea or the trees until I have placed the seal of God on the foreheads of his servants. And I heard how many were marked in the, with the seal of God. There were 144,000 who were sealed from the tribes of Israel. And so, um, the Lord has promised to protect his people and the seal of God is that protection. And when we believe in Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And this happens again, the moment a person believes we are sealed with that mark of, of ownership. And so those having the seal of God are now under his authority and protection. And so we have to, you know, this alone shows that we belong to God now and we should try to do everything we can to follow his will and live for him and do the things that he wants us to do for his kingdom. Um, so then the other part of, of all of that, the other part of that was, um, it's okay. Can you take him in there, please? Well, then take her and him in there, please. Thank you. Um, sorry, we're we're babysitting grandkids today, so. Um. So Psalms. Let's see, Romans eight thirty one says, "What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us?" 
And then uh, Psalms 118 and 6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And so um, he made a statement, you know, that he wanted me to go over about the about now you are no longer fear, fearful of death. You are no longer in fear. And so many people are, are fearful right now. You know, there's that fear affects so many people. Um, you know, they, they fear so many things. They fear uh, the wicked. They feel they fear failure, poverty, sickness, um, lack of, you know, money or, or whatever. Um, they fear the devil. They feel they fear Satan himself. They fear wicked uh, people, you know, um, but first of all, in ignorance, and I don't mean stupid, I mean ignorant, they don't understand that God, we, the only one we should fear is God. God Almighty is, is, and it should be a reverent fear of God. And so, and, and secondly, the thing that they fear is because of what they've surrounded themselves with. And again, this is, this is an ignorance on some people's part. They don't realize if you, if you get in fear watching the news, stop watching the news. <laughs> you know, if you get in fear watching or listening to certain things, stop watching and, and, and listening to those things. Anything that can, that can jog you um, into fear, you need to, to just step away from. But, and those are things that you, you know, that you have control over. Obviously we don't have control over um, certain things, but we are not to, to be in fear and you know there i would never we we aren't we don't allow um like scary movies or any any kind of movies like that in our home because of the fear that um that has you know i had as a child and, and different things and so we're not even gonna allow that in our home because it would it could spark you know fear i mean we don't want to do that anyway but besides the point it's it's you have to be careful what you watch, what you listen to, even the news. I mean, if, you know, they promote things that can cause you to be in great fear. And so that's just, that's my little side note there. But we have to choose to what we surround ourselves with. And so we have to allow ourselves to follow God and listen to, to what God's saying. And since we have the Holy Spirit, we can follow his lead and what he is saying what he wants from us. And so um, there are two determining forces, you know, that you deal directly with, obviously God and Satan, there's no in between. Um, everything on earth concerning you is governed by one of these two things. And so who you yield yourself to will determine what, you know, what becomes of you and what you're afraid of and what you, you know, all those things. Um, but, Many people are very fearful of death and they have subjected themselves to the, to the, what the devil is dictating. Um, but Christ, when he, when he died on, on Calvary for us, he released us from that fear of death. And that's actually in Hebrews um, 2 and 15. He released us from that fear of death because we were in bondage to sin we belonged to him because remember in the beginning when when um, adam fell it became a fallen a fallen world and so jesus had to come and and die for our sins and so but now that you've been sealed with the holy spirit and you know who you are in christ you have no fear of death anymore and so you know of course there's always the question of what's it going to be like but a true you know when you really really know your stance and where you sit with with god your relationship with him and you know that you know that you know that you're saved and you know that the holy spirit has sealed you for that day of redemption um, you can be at peace and you can rest because God is the one that God didn't send that spirit of fear. You know, that spirit of fear is, is not, you know, from him. The second Timothy, you know, says um, he's not given us a spirit of, of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And, and if God is for us, who can be against us? And so he really wanted me to go over those things with you just to, just to show you that, 
because of what he did, we don't have to fear death any any longer, you know, anymore. Where we are, we were bought with a price, and we were sent the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. But the Lord really wanted me just to, to kind of go over those things with you. But I also wanted to. This is my Bible that I was telling you, and, and it's really it's a um, it's a New King James version, but it's a it's called a Spirit filled Bible, and it got it, there's lots of really good stuff in here. But there's there's a whole section in here on the Holy Spirit, and I just wanted to read with you these things because um, they they give you scriptures about um, who the Holy Spirit is, and He is a person, even though He's living on the inside of you. He is He is a uh, He has the characteristics of a person. He possesses the attributes of the mind, Romans 8, 27, the will, 1 Corinthians 12 and 11, and feelings, uh, Ephesians 4 and 30. He engages in such activities as revealing things to us, that's in 2 Peter chapter 1, teaching, John 14, 26, witnessing, Hebrews 10 and 15, interceding, Romans 8, 26, speaking revelation 2 and 7 commanding acts 16 6 and 7 and testifying john 13 26. he has a relationship with human beings he can be grieved ephesians 4 and 30 remember i read it a minute ago about grieve not the holy spirit um he can be lied to acts 5 and 3 he can be blasphemed and that's matthew 12 31 and 32 um blasphemy is the unforgivable sin and it's making fun of the holy spirit it's making it's it's um i mean it's more than that but it, it is you know, everything else can be you know forgiven um and if you've worried that you know if you've been grieved in your heart and you've worried that you've blasphemed the holy spirit the very fact that you're concerned about it you probably haven't you know um but blasphemy is you know it, it does go on and it and it is against the, the, the holy spirit but the holy spirit possesses the divine attributes of the godhead the father son and holy spirit um he is eternal he is omnipresent he is omnipotent and he is omnip omniscient omniscient and that's in first corinthians 2 and 10. Um, and I already told you the names that he's referred to. Um, he is illustrated in such symbols as fire, wind, water, a seal, oil, and a dove. And so there's so much, you know, he is the anointer, the, the writer of the Old and the New Testament. Um, he is who anointed um, a, a, a prophets in, you know, the Old Testament. And so he, he has a lot of jobs. And so when we, but, but he is our guide. He is our, he is our God, um, ordained God, you know, our, our guide on the inside of us. And so he, he teaches us. And if we will only listen, you know, he will, he will teach us and lead us and show us, um, and then reveal things to us. And so a long, long, long time ago, I used to think, how can I, how can I pray to, you know, how can I talk to the Holy Spirit? I feel, I feel like I'm um, neglecting the other two, you know, and that's, that's, I mean, I was young, but, but, you know, when you think about that, it's, they're, they're all three in one, they're, they're, they're the Trinity. And so they're all the same. They have different functions, but it's one God. And so, um, but that same spirit that raised jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives on the inside of you when you truly ask jesus into your heart and there's nothing you can do to um make it leave you you know there's no you're sealed and so um there's nothing you can now you can grieve the holy spirit you can you can lie to him you know all those things that he said but but it, he the, the marking never leaves your your heart you know it never um the seal is always there because you're saved and so um, I hope that this encouraged you and, and helped you understand um, some things that, um, you know, aren't always fully explained, you know, especially um, in, you know, 
especially for new, you know, new Christians. And so, um, but I, I, I did what the Lord wanted me to do so that you can understand, you know, that power that's on the inside of you is, is great. It's, it's what, you know, what helps you pray. It's what helps you proclaim and speak things. And it, it guides you in, you know, have you ever, I was thinking about this this, this morning, have you ever had something happen in something just, in the pit of your stomach, you just felt sick at your stomach. Um, if you're saved, that's the Holy Spirit, you know, trying to get your attention to, you know, don't, don't do this. Don't, you know, don't, don't do this. Don't say this, don't whatever. And it's, and it's a, and it can actually manifest into a physical sickness in your stomach. Like, I mean, it's happened to me where the Lord was trying to get my attention about something and um, about a person and I, and I would dismiss it. And then the next morning I woke up and it was, I mean, I felt like I was going to be sick. I, it was just, it was so strong. The Lord was trying to tell me to be, to pay attention and get away from this person. And, um, and so he, he will, he will do that to warn, you know? So anyway, I hope that this helped you and blessed you. And, um, if you know anybody that needs to, to hear this thing, um, God has blessed this channel. I give him all the glory and honor for it because I was obedient. I should have been obedient a lot sooner, but I wasn't. And so he is, um, he's helping me now, but, um, I have seen views on here that was, you know, 700, I think earlier is what I saw for, for the last video that I did. And it's all, all the glory belongs to God because it is him who, he, he told me when I first started, you know, when I was having trouble being obedient about it, he said, he said, overnight, it's the, it's going to explode. You know, you're going to, people are going to be able to hear it because people are hungry for, for what God's saying right now. So, um, be encouraged, be blessed and just know that, you know, I, I pray for, for this channel. I pray for all the people that hear it. And, um, I appreciate you so much for spending your your time you could be spend your, spend your time doing anything else and i appreciate you um for listening and and listening to what the lord is saying right now because he wants us he wants to tell us he wants to 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 show us what's things are to, you know things are to come so that we can prepare in our hearts and so he's so very good love him and um i appreciate him and um appreciate you guys and uh, be blessed. I will see you next time.